excited to be here. Uh, I want to thank the, uh, the ownership here, the staff. They've been great. They've been great to work with. They've actually hooked us up with a lot of stuff to give away. Free drinks, free food. So that is something to be uh, very happy with. Absolutely. Thank you very much. A lot of applause for Roscoe Star here. So I, I want to start a little different today. I want to start with an apology to Michigan Wolverines fans. Yes, an apology. <laughs> the Michigan Wolverines fan that celebrated the departure of Jim Trestle at the end of our era of dominance. 20 fucking wins Straight in a row. Wins. Where's the Buckeyes fans? 20 wins in a row. And um, I'm sorry, Wolverines fans. It's only kicked up the era of dominance. So with that said, I'm Mike Glass, Fred Finnegan, Dale Shantz Tercy, DST if you know by DJ Felix, Ramon Torres. We have a huge show today. First off, we're gonna we're going to talk a little bit about the time that uh, that we when we started back in the day. We'll, we'll get into that a little bit uh, towards the end of the show. But we're definitely gonna talk about the Browns. We got to talk about the, the quarterback change. We've got to talk about uh, the Buckeyes a little bit. We'll do the two minute drill. And also, do we have Cavs, to talk about the Browns. We, I mean, yeah, we got to. We got to. Also, we've got the uh, the Cavaliers are now kicking it off. And we've basketball got, season ready to go. They're looking good. We got a lot of prospects coming up too. And a very good season. So, with that in mind, I say we start off with the Browns. So, Whedon was our quarterback, Campbell was number three, Hoyer jumped Campbell, Hoyer then became our starting quarterback, and now Whedon gets benched for the guy that was the third string quarterback. Here's the question, here's the main question. Is this regime trying to win, or is there some other reason why they would stick in the guy they thought was the third string quarterback? Well, if they would have stuck with Brandon Whedon, I think that they were trying to throw some games. I was, I was wondering why they haven't gone to Jason Campbell. I mean, come on, you watched the, you watched the game last week. Have you seen any worse quarterback play than you saw for Brandon Whedon last week? that he would get uh, if he were to start and, you know, based on how he would perform in the games, maybe they were afraid to spend the money, but they definitely made the right decision. They still got seats to sell for the rest of the year, so Jason Campbell is a breath of fresh air. He's, you know, a proven NFL starter. Let's see what he can do with some weapons like we have. Well, yeah, and, and, uh, and we do have a lot of weapons, and Dale, do you think that the fact that Hoyer was able to come in and do so well is a sign that maybe the problem is Whedon, and we've got a team that's ready to explode with the right quarterback? Well, Hoyer had what Whedon doesn't have, and that's confidence. You know, he's got that field general mentality, that guy that can go out and, you know, really control the offense and read what the defense is trying to do to him, call the right audibles. We don't see that from Whedon. We see deer in headlights, we see the double pump, we see staring down one receiver, and I think, you know, when, when, you're, when you pile that all up, it's really, let's get on to the next guy. I think it's all Cleveland fans So that's 
the reason we moved to Campbell. So, and Ramon, do you think that the move to Campbell then is an attempt to try to salvage the season and actually maybe make a playoff run? Not to mention that you wanted Campbell since day one. Yeah, I've been wanting Campbell since day one, but I think it's an attempt at, uh, at keeping his job as a coach. Um, as we all know, that coaches don't last here very long as well due to decisions they make. So, uh, look for him to try to make a move. And uh, obviously, uh, I'm a big fan of mobile quarterbacks, especially when the line fails. You need somebody who can get away. And uh, Campbell brings that option to this team. I like that a lot.
Pittsburgh and Jersey. No. Final score, uh, Kansas City versus the Browns. We've got a, uh, a tremendously good defense, an undefeated team that we're playing against today, and a team that actually plays against the tight end well, plays against the wide receiver well, and we have an offense on our side that, at this point, you have to say it's unknown. You can't say it's a bad offense because you don't know what Campbell can do with it. So, Ramon, we're going to start with you. Final score, Kansas City, Browns, in about, uh, what, about three hours from now? I'm going with, uh, are you going to go with the Browns? I'm going with the Browns 24-17 only because those are my squares I got for. <laughs> well played. Well, well as good as a reason as any. Why not? Uh, I'll be money as well, so I'm going with the Browns. Browns is Ramon. DST. You know, I really, uh, I really like what Andy Reid has done to this Kansas City team. They had a lot of pieces all over the field that Romeo Cornell just couldn't bring together. And they've got talent all over the field. They're 7-0 and for a reason. And uh, while, it, while it pains me, I am going to have to take the Chiefs today. Uh, I would say 27-14 Kansas City. I'm sorry, also, guys. Sorry, guys. <laughs> I'm also in the same boat. I see the Chiefs, uh, the Chiefs going out this one. I like the Browns defense. They probably may get, get, won't go up full up against us. But uh, I, like, I like the Chiefs in this one. I like Andy Reid coming over and putting to what he, get, he could actually be a potential of. And, you know, the resurrection of Alex Smith is always a good story. Um, I, like the Chief, I like the Chiefs in this one. I want to say it's going to be 24-10. Uh, Chiefs, KC. That could still be a close game, though, again, possibly. Uh, I'm in a similar boat. i got to say KC, and here's why. They're brutal against the run. They're brutal against the pass. Two touchdowns all season to uh, the running backs. Two touchdowns. That's it. Campbell has to win this game. Now, without a running back anyway, it's, it's a little tough. Rock and I is a little bit banged up. Um, and, and so we're, we're, we're struggling at this point at running back. They're good. It's Campbell that's got to win it. If Campbell shows up big, we have a chance. But honestly, I, I see a, a pretty good game. Alex Smith is in that great quarterback, but I can't great Offense with good defense. I say 2013 is supposed to be Get the points. Points on the board. Yeah, I'm down for that. Alright, so at this point we've seen uh, Campbell play for a half. It hasn't been stellar. I'm not saying it's been Brian Hoyer. None of us think that. But if you think about simply his play in the game, the man through the game compared to, to Wheaton, what are you looking at? You're looking at uh, Campbell as a better or same prospect compared to Wheaton? Uh, right off the bat, I noticed the ball getting released a lot faster than Wheaton. Yeah, so, uh, that right there in itself is a lot is a whole game changer because the ball is coming out a lot faster. Which he's doing, I mean, he's like, he's like Chris. He's sharp. He may not make all the throws, but his decisions are pretty quick and pretty deliberate. Pretty quick and also, you know, he's throwing the ball where it's not in the reach as for the defender. You know what I'm saying? Obviously, you're going to have one that might let fly. Other than that, I, I, I noticed that the, def the defense don't have no touch on it other than us, you know, so I like that part a lot. He seems comfortable in the pocket, definitely. He's letting the plays develop, and he's hitting his, he's hitting his reads, one, two. You see him looking around the field, trying to find that guy to go to, you know, unlike what we're normally used to. But he's a possession quarterback. I think he can hit those first downs and help you move the ball down the field. But it's nice to see him taking shots down there as well, putting the ball out there into the end zone on third down, trying to make the big play. Absolutely. I like the, uh, the trigger we did with the play flicker, which obviously ended up being a touchdown. You know, my, my biggest thing is why are we pulling these, these, these plays out with just one quarterback? We should, you know, we, we've seen already a couple times this year with the NFL teams that have done these plays. Why are we just not bringing these out? We should have brought them out a lot sooner, but you know what? He, he, the pass is down, you know, down the field are actually looking pretty good. Cole behind, but you know what? He's looking more uh, confident in the pocket. There's a lot more protection in the offensive line there. Uh, if, he, if he does get that little hurried, he can run away. I mean, he can run. So that's what I like from him. I like what you said earlier and how, you know, players fit into schemes. Maybe Brandon Wheaton doesn't fit in our scheme to run trickery plays like that because he's so undecisive. You know, so players who are more mobile and who are more, uh, you know, adapted to the game as far as they'll, they'll see people. You know, but, uh, you see that in Campbell. So he's a mobile quarterback, but also can give you that long play. Well, you know, and he's definitely no RG3 or Cam Newton as far as mobile quarterbacks go, but he can extend the play. We cannot extend the play. In fact, he needs a longer play and can't make it happen. And I actually, I think we is a very good quarterback on a team that has an amazing offensive line. We do not, we're not going to, most teams don't. You've got to have a quarterback, and I hate to say it, like a Roethlisberger As soon as you exit the pocket, as soon as you take off and you stay behind the line we can throw, those receivers are released because the defense has a hard time.
for me, as a run, you know, as watching the running backs, uh, we're just falling back in points. So your initiative is to throw the ball because you got to pass. You know, you know, you got to pass. Once you fall back down, you see the shotgun off the rip. You know, so I see that. But as far as the Trent Richardson trade, uh, as I said it before, I, I didn't, I didn't. It bothered me at first, but when I thought about it, got more in depth into it. Uh, it seemed like a good trade because he wasn't doing nothing here. So uh, he's doing the same thing he did uh, here, over there, which is nothing. Okay, you can say it's nothing, but on that team, what he does, they need. And he is a big improvement to that team, and he's not a big loss to our team. So we yeah, should say that, that, though. We have not seen red, it. Red zone touchdowns is all that he gives that team, and that's all he all gave up. That's what they need because Andrew Mark is a great, great quarterback. Andrew Mark can do a lot of things. But when you have that 20 yard Field. The entire defense covering 20 yards. Every quarterback has trouble when you can hand it off to a guy that can make those 20 yards on the, on the field, like on the ground. He don't do 20 big. yards. He does five well, yards. Here, here's the thing, though. But Turnson has has a name that, that kind of scares other teams, and other 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 defenses. I mean, that's what he had. He may not get that 20 yard dash. Or, you know, he may get like every five yards because five yards count towards towards it, to a fourth, uh, first down. But he gave you that that oh, it's Turnson. He's in
for you to pick up I like Mike Brown back because it was not his fault. He just had a prima donna on his team that we actually bowed to every time. No pun intended because he wasn't his team. But it's to the point where that, that's what I like this year. And we, you know, we had a solid, the, uh, the draft picks I like. I love the draft picks that we do. Tristan Thompson, never heard of. Granted, he has kind of went down a little bit. Double doubles. Double, yeah. Consistently. Exactly. And now we're like Anthony Ben, like, what? That's what we picked? So I'm really excited to see what he can do. And the Della Doa, who has been the preseason, has actually been pretty good with Kyrie, because they didn't play Kyrie that much in the preseason, but he's actually been a pretty center point just, to, uh, just off the bench. Well, you know, I think you're nailing exactly. Uh, the biggest improvement, exactly. Exactly. The biggest improvement in the last three years is that Dan Gilbert no longer looks at one player as the source to the Holy Grail. And at this point, Dan Gilbert has really done a lot to build a team around a plan and not a player. Kyrie has bought into that, likes it, he's a quiet guy. He obviously doesn't like the spotlight because he's given it and he steps back. It's a perfect combination. And here's the biggest thing that I think is, is important. The draft picks that we've had have not been big name draft picks, but they have fit a, a, a similar scheme in every case. Tristan Thompson, he's sized for a forward, but his wingspan says center. So now, how do you game plan for that guy? Is he forward? Is he center? Is he on the field with Andy? Is he not on the field with Andy? Sorry, court. With Andy. So is he center, forward? Where is he playing? That's tough. And look at the same thing with Tyler Zeller. I know Tyler Zeller's a bigger guy, a little lanky, it's a lot like Z. He's also got the shot like the old Z. And I think Tyler Zeller is another tweener, as they call him. You don't know how to game plan for him. Are we going to make him shoot? Is he going to be under the, under the basket? Where is he going to be? And you Bennett. Bennett's a guy who is unbelievably skilled. shows and we'll go right into the raising of beer and I want to tell everybody about our first show. Can I tell everybody about the first show? Yes you can. This is top secret right now. De top secret. Declassified. Yeah. All right. If you go back and you look on the Facebook page and if you go back and you look on the YouTube channel you will find the first show is marked number three. Why is it marked number three? Well these four idiots up here all four of us <laughs> We thank you, the, thank you. Yes, we set the film, the very first show. We spent a lot of time setting up the scene. We drove the ways to get there. We had a great setup. We had everything was great. Somebody forgot to bring a tape. Who was that? That was Dale Shans Tercy. So we had a camera. And it was a great first run without really actually recording it. So. We had a $3,000 camera and no tape. So that's where we started <laughs> off. So we went out, we got a tape, and then to record it. And, um... And so we had uh, we had somebody on the stage right now who was a little bit asthmatic and sounded like Darth Vader. That was Dale Jensen. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Another DST right there. Great. Right. 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 Pet danger. I didn't know. You know. When he came asthmatic. It was not a good show. You know. So, I, I didn't get the, the the hospital you know background when he first showed up. I mean. We didn't check that. Out. We knew. So so we scrapped that. So then we went to Dale's house and we set up a little set, spent a lot of time setting it up, did, this, did the whole show. It was the very first GB show at the set that we're at now. We spent a lot of time and in the end we had no way of getting the video and audio from that camera to the TV or to YouTube and the channel in between was broken, we couldn't figure it out. It took us two weeks, the show was over, it was a waste. That's the kind of morality that you get with us. So show number three, show number three. We've got to make this happen, and we did. Yes, we did. We recorded it, edited it, got it up on YouTube. September 11, 2010. It was really cool. It was, it was you know, we, we stepping stone, but very cool to play. We decided to start on a date that everybody knew about, September 11. So we figured, you know what, everybody's going to remember us because it's September 11. September 11th. September 11th is the day we all started class. Yes, it is. Yeah, absolutely. I met, all, 
I met these guys on September 11th. So. Yes. I want to tell you what. We are 2008 Ohio Center for Broadcasting graduates. And while we were there, we formed a friendship that would evolve into something that none of us were ready for. And we're hoping that it continues to grow to the next level. And maybe you'll be watching us on Sports Time Ohio one day. And I just, I love all you guys a lot, man. I really do. You guys are my brothers. Game Day Battle is amazing. And I appreciate everybody that came out to show us the show us Me, but apparently you have to kill me, so I don't want to do that right now. Well, yeah, that's I, true, I that's true. That, that, 
get to the tradition. So, Turb, though. Turb is what Brett offered for the name of our child as Brett Backley. So, I am going to be sentimental and raise my beer to the three other gentlemen that started this stage with me, and the three other gentlemen that, that started the show with me, and the three guys that make this work. And I am so proud and honored to be part of this with you guys. So, I am very happy, and I want to thank, heartfelt thanks to everybody that came today. And then all 524 people that like our Facebook page, and the 100 people that like our, our, uh, our YouTube channel.